Um, good morning, uh, welcome. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the first and main period of hillfall construction in southern Britain or, or England, um, which takes place in the early Iron Age, usually uh, in the period between <coughs> 600 and 400 BC. I'm going to be looking at what the impetus is for this period of widespread hillfall construction in this area and, and focusing on a region that has traditionally formed the centre of hillfall studies in Britain, which is Wessex. Now, there are a number of models for hillforts in, in Britain, or say England. Uh, the first and traditional model, uh, typified by Hawkes, is that they're there to they represent waves of incursion from the continent, either built to defend against invaders or built to subjugate a, a conquered people. Um, this was kind of overturned by the, the new archaeology, and Barry Cunliffe looked at Hillforts as representing the annexation of communal resources by a newly emergent elite. Uh, again, a new uh, post-processual way of looking at things came in, and we have J.D. Hill looking as uh, at Hillforts as a device for the social reproduction of mixed agricultural households that are quite widely dispersed across the, the area. Building upon this work, we have the idea that they're communal building exercises designed to strengthen social bonds. Uh, and more recently, we have Ian Armit coming almost a, a retro model that they represent a phase of increased violence, uh, warfare, raiding. And we also have a model from Neil Sharples, which is that um, during the Bronze Age, you have this. Uh, circulation of uh, bronze as the medium of uh, elite competition or communal competition and that as the bronze system comes to an end they're replaced by hill forts uh, for the conspicuous consumption of resources as a form of elite competition. <laughs> now for these they're all, there are problems with all of these now for the, the ways of incursion from the continent, where there's no evidence that we have uh, any invasion going on during the early Iron Age. Uh, again, for the elites, there's no evidence for elites at this time, other than hill forts. We have hill forts because they're constructed by elites. What's the evidence for elites? Well, we have hill forts. So we have this circular argument. Um, then the models for, for example, the, the escalation of violence, the, the requirement as a, a device for social reproduction or, or communal building exercises, there's no explanation or no satisfactory explanation as why these are suddenly required at this point when for hundreds if not thousands of years we didn't need hill forts uh, for social reproduction or to defend against kind of violence and warfare. So that, you know, there has to be an impetus here that's not really explained. And, and lastly, if we look at the, the model for uh, competitive um, elite structures, these are, there's a hiatus of about 200 years between the end of bronze as a, 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 a metal <coughs> that kind of has a super, um, a super functional kind of uh, value to it and the construction of hillfalls. So we have a gap in there, there's a, this lacuna. If we look at the, the period that's immediately preceding um, the construction of hillfalls, we have a very distinct landscape um, that is you know, constructed. So we have lots of linear earthworks constructed around the landscape. Um, often they focus on nodal hill points in the landscape um, and we get early hilltop enclosures constructed in these points or at the end of these linear earthworks. And these early enclosures are usually quite slight uh, in terms of the banks and ditches. Very rarely have very much inside them. 
so they're not occupied as settlements. Um, and in general, settlement is very, very low. We, there's, it's not very visible at all. We have a number of sites that usually consist of maybe a, a half, a shallow ditch, and these are interpreted as temporary pastoral camps. So the image that we have of this earliest Iron Age period is one of, of transhumans uh, being the, the dominant mode or, or, or dominant economic mode or, or way of life. Um, and if we then move into the early Iron Age, what we have is, is a, a picture of a, a landscape that's much more familiar to us. We have these uh, enclosures with roundhouses, um, pits that are associated with the storage of grain, uh, four and six post structures that are traditionally interpreted as raised granaries. Um, and in general, there's much more of a focus on arable production uh, at these sites. And this is really just to, to illustrate the difference in the, in the density of sites. Over on the, the right-hand side, we have the number of sites from the earliest Iron Age, and on the left-hand side, you've got all the early Iron Age sites, and you've got the hill forts mixed in there as well. And this is, this is not Wessex as a whole, but this is one area of Wessex. This is the, the Avon Valley around Salisbury. Right, so, uh, where are hill forts constructed? Well, they are constructed at places that are meaningful to the pre preceding transhuman or pastoralist phase of activity. So we find them at the end of linear earthworks, um, at nodal points in the linear earthwork system, um, at junctions between higher upland and valley resources. We're, we're talking about Wiltshire here, so when we talk upland, we're talking about rough pasture rather than alpine meadows. Um, but also over earlier, <coughs> early hilltop enclosures, and along long distance routeways. So if we have a look at the, the, the forks here, we've got Oldbury up here. I don't know. We have Oldbury here, which is uh, constructed at the end of a couple of linear earthworks and at the edge of the, the valley. Uh, we have Liddington, again, constructed at the edge of the valley and across at the end of a couple of linear earthworks also constructed on the line of a prehistoric, or interpreted as a prehistoric routeway called the Ridgeway. We have Quarley Hill, constructed over an earlier palisaded enclosure, but also at a nodal point in the uh, network of uh, linear earthworks. We have the classic example of Danebury here, Danebury Hillfall, which is constructed inside an earlier hilltop enclosure and at the end of a, a linear earthwork. And this is Barbary Castle, which again, I think illustrates quite well. It's on the edge of the valley, but you can see the, the routeway of the ridgeway running through one entrance and out the other. And a lot of the, the hill forts on, in Northern Wessex really are, are built along the line of the ridgeway. So they're controlling movement and they're, they're controlling uh, movement over quite long distances. So, at the time we have hill forts being built, we have this shift to arable exploitation in an increasingly sedentary world. Now this would have impacted upon the, the availability of land for the pastoralists as pasture, but more importantly it would have impacted upon the ability of the pastoralists to move their animals through the landscape, because the linear earthworks and the the early hilltop enclosures that they're constructed on are associated with that movement of the animals. And, you know, we might expect tensions to be arising between these two groups, the sedentary arable farmers that are increasingly exploiting the landscape, and the, the pastoralists, the transhuman um, uh, people moving through the landscape with their animals increasingly coming into <laughs> conflict. And, and doubtless, this is the, 
the impetus for the creation of so many hill forts at this time. At locations that are long established with these seasonal routes taken by the partialists and associated with partialist traditions. Now what their function is, however, depends upon your view of society. It's very easy to, to, to jump to the conclusion that these are built by the, the fixed arable farmers. You know, we, we don't necessarily think that the pastoralists might have a role within their construction. And it's easy to go down the, the Ian Arnett route of seeing these as being militaristic in nature, constructed to dominate and control land, confronting the pastoralists as a new economic regime takes over, or even to act as refugees if tensions between the two groups turn to conflict. But there is little or no evidence of violence at these early hill forts, and they would have required considerable labour to construct. And it's, it's more than likely that they would have needed to draw upon the resources of both communities to construct them, both pastures and the sedentary groups. So alternative narratives can see these as spaces created to structure the interactions between these two groups facilitate two occasionally conflicting ways of life. Their associations with the earlier pastoralist sites may draw upon the historical traditions of these sites associated with the intersection between the different social groups, mobile and sedentary, and systems of moral behavior that drew upon these meetings. In many ways, Hillforts could act in what Gary Locke terms as models of anger management in the Iron Age. Thank you.